Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree, and welcome to the assembly video for our festive holiday tote. This is a Santa-inspired handbag. And it's actually probably the easiest one to put together in this new bundle. I'm gonna walk you through it right now. So obviously we have two sides to the bag. Here's side one, here's side two. This piece here, you'll notice that there's some stitching on it. Um, you can have your machine do the stitching. What I noticed was, for whatever reason, it's probably just the pen that I used. Um, when it does the stitching, when it drops the pen down, it always leaves like a little circle, uh, like that's a little bit darker than the rest of the line. So what I actually did was I used my debosser and then stitched this in manually. I think it looks better personally, but that's up to you. It's up to you how you want to do it, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece and glue it onto this piece. Okay, so let's start off by doing that. Let's get our glue going. I'm gonna apply glue to this entire piece here and go easy with the glue here. We don't want to get this paper so wet with glue that you start to see it seeping through. I'm gonna line this up with the little cutouts there. That's where our little, little buckle's gonna go. So do your best to get that aligned as accurately as possible. It's just easier to do this right now while it's flat. And initially I was not going to do any inking on this, but I did kind of hit it with a little bit of ink just around the edges, just to darken the edges a little bit. Okay, so there's the first piece. Make sure you got it good. Okay, do the same thing with the next one. And Very easy with the glue here. This is a good size little handbag. Perfect for a small gift. And again, very festive. Now obviously you don't have to make it using Christmas colors. You can make it however you want. That's the beauty of being able to customize all this stuff. Okay, just make sure you've got it lined up. Should be flush with the bottom. Make sure that these little cutouts are all nice and lined up. There we go. If you have a brayer and you want to use that, by all means, you can do that. Okay. Now, also, while we have this flat, uh, this would be a good time to put our, our little uh, embellishments onto these sections here. And you don't want to put too much glue on these little guys because you don't want it squirting out all over the place. I would recommend just applying very little glue and thinning it out with your fingers. And then we're just gonna match that up with the little cutout. The classic gold and red is beautiful. There we go. And there's a total of eight of these. We've got four on each side. So I would just do little dots and then thin that out with your finger so that you don't get a glue explosion all over the place. There we go. Give that a good press, just like that. Got a couple more on this side. Okay, this is one of those projects where it may take longer to cut it out than it does to assemble it, which happens occasionally. There we go, moving right along. And you can already see it kind of coming together and looking spectacular. So I was kind of doing things a little bit backwards this week. Usually we wait till everything's cut out and everything's finalized. I was already creating videos for two of the items while Diana was finishing up this handbag just because I needed to get a little bit ahead for Peyton's birthday. I posted a cute little picture of him in the group today. Um, every year I like to use my lawn sweeper to go around and pick up all the leaves and put them in one giant pile. I've got a Gavin and Gabby or 10 and 11, but they still appreciate a good leaf pile, which is good because I'm sure those years are fleeting as they're slowly turning into teenagers. Uh, but we threw Peyton in there, and Peyton's much like his daddy. 
I remember my mom telling stories about me. Oops, I gotta reapply this glue. I never liked to get dirty as a kid. And for whatever reason, Peyton didn't really, didn't really like the texture of the leaves. He just kind of kept his hands up above them. Didn't really, really touch them, even though he's a super messy eater. So that doesn't really make any sense. Kind of being a little hypocrite there, but that's okay. That's what makes him unique, I guess. I got a really cute picture of him in the leaf pile. One that we will cherish for a long time, I'm sure. All right, so, so far so good, very simple. And as you can see, there are two little sides that we need to join. There's a bottom, a liner, the little handle is three layers each. We wanted it to be nice and thick. Okay, there we go. And the stitching looks really nice. All right, so next we can start gluing the sides together. Now you can see here, there's a cutout here, and that's just so that that little strap can go through. You wanna make sure that you get the bottom aligned with the very bottom of the front, and then the top should pretty much meet right where it ends there. Okay, and I'd probably just do this kind of flat. I pre-folded it just to make things easier on me, but we can absolutely glue this down while it's flat. It's not gonna harm anything as far as the assembly goes. And I do want to spread that glue out to the very edge of that nice large tab. Okay, let's just get this right here. And look at that, that little cutout for where the buckle's gonna go. And then also make sure the bottom is nice and lined up. Press that down, give that a few seconds to set. And then you can take it and fold it over onto itself. Check your alignment. That looks good. Give that a press. Nice and easy. Okay, there we go. And that looks great. I might have got a little glue on there, it's okay. And you can see it kind of coming together. Now we'll continue doing this flat, might as well. So let's take and apply glue to this tab now. And let's spread that out to the very edge. Put that down. And just like we did the first time, get that nice and aligned. Look at where that little cutout is, which is where the strap's gonna go. Perfect. Press that down. You can go ahead and fold it over onto itself. Check your alignment. Give that a good press. Get this more centered for you. There we go. Oh no. I had some glue on my surface somehow. It's okay. I'll try to erase that with an eraser. See if that'll work for me or not. I just gotta be careful about stuff like that. Okay, let's head on over to the other side here. And let's apply our glue to this tab. And spread that out. I'm not sure how that glue ended up there. Never want to see that, but that's okay. We'll make it work. Usually I can take a, an eraser from a standard number two pencil and just kind of rub it on there very gently. And sometimes it'll get rid of those little blemishes, let's hope. There we go. Let's fold this over onto itself. Check the alignment. Give that a press. There we go. There's that glue, that was weird. Okay, looks good. And now, we can go ahead and close this up. Let's apply our glue to the last tab here. Spread that out. There we go. And this one I'm just gonna hold in the air. I'm not gonna push this one down flat because I don't think that that end piece is symmetrical actually. Pretty sure that it's not. There we go. 
Press that down. Make sure you get the two ends. Let me see. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to mess with that. I can fold it like this though. Just very gently. Give that a good press. And that is just some gunk off my finger. Boy, I am making a mess here today. Let me see if I can clean that up. That just rubbed right off. Okay, so you can see how it kind of folds in like that. Now we just need to flip this over. Got to put a bottom on it. Okay, you have two pieces that look like this. One has a little L on it. That's going to go on the inside. The other one has nothing on it, and that's our liner. And what I'm going to do is glue it to just one of these tabs. This is going to be, um, well, my anchor point, basically. Let's bring this down so we can spread this glue out. Just be careful not to get it onto this surface, which is why I bring that tab down like this, because as I spread it, my finger naturally goes up and away from that surface. Okay, so the, the piece without the L is what we're looking for. Pop that right on there, nice and centered, right out to the very edge. Gotta give that a little nudge. That glue is super tacky, so I could not nudge it. Just had to peel it off very gently. Line that up right up to the seam, and you can drop that down, press down from the inside, help the rest of that tab make contact. And it looks pretty centered, I'd say. Let's take a look at that seam. Not perfect, but I will work on that here. Okay. Much better. Okay, we can always go in and use our little painting method to paint the rest of that in place. Now we're gonna bring these tabs up a little bit. We can move this out of the way as much as possible. And we'll apply our glue to the remaining three tabs. And take and spread that glue out to the very edges very gently. Close this up, just get it aligned with this side first, nice and centered right out to that edge. If you need to kind of push this side in a little bit, that's totally normal. This paper is going to breathe a little bit. And then just press down right on that seam, and then get the two sides, and then flip it over, push down from the inside. Might be helpful since it's pretty, pretty thin in there. Pardon my head, just to use a dowel to push down on that. Then we just need to take a look at our seams. And again, if we need to go in and paint a little bit of glue, I'll show you how that works. Just grab a scrap piece of paper, throw a little bit of glue right on the very edge of it, and then you can tuck it in between little layers there that need a little extra love or rub off any excess, and then just press and hold that down in that specific little area that needs that little touch to get it nice and flat. Now while I'm waiting for that to cure, I'll grab another scrap and I'm gonna thin that out a little bit. Tuck that underneath this area here. Got another little area here that just I didn't do a very good job on, and I'll just hold that down until that seam is nice and clean. Let me just go around, check your work, now you can see how beautiful that looks. Very simple, if it happens, it happens. Just don't worry about it. You can always just use that little painting method I just showed you, and now you have a perfect little handbag. Okay, now on the inside here, we're gonna take and apply some glue right onto those tabs, and that's where we take this piece with a little L we're going to pop it right in there and just push that down into place. It's going to cover up the tabs, make it look real nice, and also reinforce our bottom. Okay, so that looks great. 
All right, now, uh, well, we just have the little, little buckle and the handles to put together. So again, there's three handles for each side. Okay, and that's just to make it nice and sturdy so it doesn't bend and bow. And just really easily and basically just taking and gluing all three of these on top of each other to create three layers. This thing's kind of flimsy, so it might just be easier to leave it on your surface. Use a little circular motion to kind of get it around the perimeter there as well. Drop that piece on top, line it up as accurately as you can, which shouldn't be difficult at all. And press that down. If you have a little brayer, by all means, you can use that. <coughs> really help that glue get in between those layers. Okay, so that's two together. And now I'm gonna do the same thing one more time to add the third layer. And then this is actually gonna get glued right to the front of our little handbag. So here comes the third layer. Just kind of lining it up down here first and just make your way around. You can go clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever, whatever's easier for you. Okay, there we go. That's good. Okay, so just make sure you do the same thing with the other one. And for each one, we're gonna start off by putting where did my glue go? There it is. Got this large little overlay that's gonna go on first. This is, a, this is like a gold pearlescent. It's gonna go right there. Okay, so you're going to put one here, 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 and here. We'll do the other one. And then there's, we have a, a yellow pearlescent that's going to go on top of that as well to give it sort of a dimensional two-toned look. So just line that up, making sure my fingers are clean. The foils and the pearlescents, they don't like blemishes. They're far less forgiving than cardstock is okay so you can do the same thing with this one and then you're going to find these two little pieces and these are going to go right on top give them a little bit of a dimensional look and you're going to get that centered and i think there's you know, i thought there was a marker there but it's actually just some glue gunk that's going to go like that and I've got one more. It's going to go right here. Just like that. Get that nice and centered. So don't forget to put those on your other handle as well. You can put those off to the side for just a moment. And you can see there's a series of markers here and here to help you with the placement. And those are going to go right there like that. Okay. All right, next, I'm gonna grab these two strips, make sure they're right side up. You notice there's some circles there in the center. That's for these little, these little guys here. I'm gonna get these glued into place first, using those little markers as our guides. Just go easy with the glue there. You don't need a whole heck of a lot. And I said this before, but boy, it's incredible how after years and years and years of research and development, these companies still can't, still can't get these things to cut a perfect circle, especially when they get smaller, but such is life. Whoops. What can you do? There we go. Yeah, and this is where you really want to make sure that your glue nozzle is nice and clean. 
your fingers are nice and clean and just take your time little little tiny dots and you can use your glue nozzle to kind of spread it around so you don't end up with glue on your fingers just make the process nice and clean okay Sometimes I, when I'm working on real tiny things like this, I get kind of quiet because I feel like I'm performing surgery. I don't want to do anything to harm my patients. Okay, so I've got those four in place. Going to do the next four. And like I said, this is kind of a... If, if Mrs. Claus was going to design a little handbag, I think this is how it would look. Okay, we go. Pop that right on there. A couple more to go. A couple two tree for my people in Wisconsin. There we go. There it is. All right. This is great for maybe some makeup. A uh, small little gift, gift card, uh, a little maybe a necklace or a bracelet, a little watch, something relatively small. It's still a good size bag. I didn't want to make it too big. I wanted to keep it relatively sparse on paper because I know that's kind of a big deal these days. Um, this little buckle part, we're gonna actually glue two of these together just to double it up and make it a little more rigid and kind of extend its potential longevity. So take two, glue them back to back like so. Just like that. And we'll do the same thing with the with the other one. And then we have one more little gold piece, and that's going to be used to join these two strips together. Uh, well, they're just little overlays, I should say, but either way, almost there. Okay, so our buckles are done. And I think maybe you know, what we could do is Let's just get these handles glued on real quick. Okay, so we want to take and we'll apply a glue definitely to this section here and here. And then we can go up, go up a tiny bit. Just a little bit, don't go up too high. Okay, and then use those little markers to guide you. And of course, make sure they're nice and even. That looks pretty straight to me. You can also put that down on your surface, push down from the inside. There we go. <coughs> okay. Um, I actually have to cut out a couple more of these little overlays for the handle. So yours are gonna be on there. I'm gonna put those on after I get this assembly video done. I forgot to, uh, took them off the mat and I just, I left them in the other room. But yours is gonna go on just like this with those little pieces already intact. Okay, make sure it's nice and even. I'm going to take a look and make sure this, the handles match up, and they do. Push that down. Okay. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this piece, and we're going to feed it in through this little hole here. Okay. And then we need to feed it out through here, like so. Just be gentle here. We don't want to disturb the little rings on there. Okay, now we also want to feed the buckle through at this time. 
and it's going to go over and then under. You can always feed it through a little extra and then feed it through like that. Okay. And we want this to be in the center like so. Okay. And this is going to go through and it's going to come out like that. You can adjust that very gently. Okay. And we're going to flip this over. And now you notice we have this little rectangular part there. So we want the other rectangle on this side. Okay. And it's going to go in again and get that in so that you don't have to crease this little band and pop it out, run it through very gently. Okay. Let's get our buckle and it's going to go like this and like that. Get it over little circles, get that nice and centered. And then it's going to go in and then it's going to come out. Okay. Make sure you have that nice and centered. And then this is going to come in. You're going to glue that to the back side of this piece. Okay. And you'll notice that here there's a little score mark. So that's going to, you're going to take this part and glue that right up to the score mark. Okay. So you can go ahead and apply glue to this little section here, all the way up to that score mark. And then what I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue right at the very edge of this like that and bring these together and pull that right up. Let me get rid of that glue right there. So I don't make a mess. Bring that right up to that score mark. Make sure it's nice and centered and just press and hold that in place until it sets. Okay. Try not to bend or crease anything. Just hold that in place like so. Okay. Then we're going to repeat the same process here on this side and that should meet perfectly right at that little score mark. So go ahead and apply your glue here. Get as close to that little score mark as you can. And then a little bit right on the edge of the other end, bring that down, line it up with the score mark. Make sure it's centered, not sideways. There we go. And just continue holding that in place. Got a little bit of glue that squirted out of there, but that's okay. It's going to dry mostly clear anyway. And there we go. So it should be nice and centered for us. Okay. That looks great. And then I'm going to take these little pieces here and you can see how it's kind of curved on the corner. So take this and just run it through a dowel, place it between your finger and the dowel and just kind of give it a little bit of a curve like that. That'll help it stay on there a lot easier. Okay. We'll apply our glue. Pop it right on there. Make sure it's nice and centered. Make sure you don't have any glue on your fingers. You press that down. Okay, there we go. That looks awesome. And the last one, and then we have a little poinsettia for the front of the bag, just to make it a little more festive. Pop that right on there. Okay. A little glue on there. 
that's okay. All right, so the point set is pretty straightforward. I did take this and ink it and inked it, okay? And on each of these, you'll notice there's a set of score marks. Just take the, the tips or the edges of each of the petals and just squeeze them and pinch them right up to the tip. Okay, you're gonna repeat that for all these. This last one's kind of hard to do that with, but what you can do is take a small dowel and then just curl these petals up against the dowel to give them a little dimension. Okay, and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with the largest flower or set of petals, throw a little bit of glue in the center, grab the next largest, we're gonna offset it. So you don't want them right on top of each other. You wanna rotate it a little bit so that each of the little petals is nice and visible and rotate that however you need to, to make that happen. Okay, so it's gonna look like that. And then we can throw a little bit of glue on that one. You can pull these up a little bit too, if needed. And we're gonna rotate this one as well. Make sure you keep it nice and centered. Press that down. You can use a dowel too to really add some pressure to that, really make it stick. And then we've got one more little dot for the center for this little guy. And don't forget to grab one of your favorite little embellishments or a rhinestone, pop that in the middle of your poinsettia. And then we also have some beautiful little holly leaves. You can take and I have a hard time cutting this evergreen color for some reason. You kind of curl them up a little bit, throw a dot of glue right there, pop that in the middle, press that down. Okay, don't forget, put a little embellishment on there, figure out which side is gonna be your front, and then you can add that, that little touch right there. I'm actually gonna take a little foam square and I'm gonna use a foam square to attach that, give this thing a little extra dimension. Really make it pop. And let's see, that looks good right about there. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Super quick, very simple, super, super festive. And there you have it. So that's gonna do it guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please visit us on our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. While you're there, hit the little bell so you get notifications anytime we release a new project, whether it be paid or free. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I'd love to see it, and so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook, do a search for Dreaming Tree Official. That's where you'll find myself and over 40,000 other dreamers that inspire us daily. So hope you had a blast, and as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos, and please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where you'll find over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly tutorials. I'll see you in the craft room.